So today let's take a look at another Chinese water heater because in the last video I forgot to test one important thing. How well this metal is isolated from mains. So let's take a look at this one which is a little bit smaller than the other one. It's from eBay for $1.70 including shipping and the listing says 500 watts electric water heater liquids immersion travel portable boiler 220 volts. So here's my cat helping me of course and now the question is how well this metal is isolated from mains because this is critical for safety. And this one already looks quite dodgy because it has no ground, just two pins and a super tiny plug, super thin cable and this strain relief is super flimsy. It almost comes off now. Already. And so the resistance of the heating element is about 85 ohms. Now is it isolated from this metal? 15 mega ohms? I would expect it to be infinite resistance on this multimeter because its measuring voltage is like few volts and it's up to like 20 mega ohms. As you can see I'm not touching anything, that's not the resistance of my body, that's the resistance of the isolation in it and I would expect it to be way too high for the multimeter to measure but it's not. So my cat just ran away because it already looks too dodgy to her and if she didn't I would put her into a safer place anyway and now let's try to see it in operation. Let's put it in water and plug it in and measure the leakage current. So the cat is back but before I plug it in she goes behind the door of course. So let's put a wire on it to measure the leakage current. Basically the current going from mains into this metal pipe on it. So let's test it in water. Let's plug it in using a dodgy adapter because it has a Chinese plug of course and let's measure the current it draws using my special tool with a loop of wire for my clamp meter. Like this. And it draws. Okay, it's a good idea to plug this extension in. Of course, and it draws 2.8 amps. So let's put a lamp in a series to see if there is any leakage. Let's plug it in. And the lamp is not lighting up yet. And so there is no serious leakage now. And is the current measurable like this? It's not. So it seems nice now. What if I turn it? Okay, still good. And it's boiling. Bloody hell! Seriously? Are you kidding me guys? This is not a leakage anymore, this is like a dead short circuit. Bloody hell. So now as you can see the metal surface of it is live at mains voltage and the water is live at mains voltage. Nice. I was sure this device is dodgy but this is even dodgier than I expected because after just one use the metal surface of it is live at mains voltage and the isolation is gone in it probably. This is just amazingly dodgy, that's another deadly Chinese device. Is it a completely dead short circuit or... Okay this is a bad idea but let's try this. 80 milliamps. Nice. Okay, so it's not a dead short circuit, but the leakage current is 90 milliamps almost, which is a deadly current. And the voltage in it is... 220 volts in one polarity and in the other polarity it's just 8 volts, 
which means that the short circuit is close to one end of the heater. There is basically a resistive wire in it and the metal pipe on it and the short circuit seems to be very close to one end of it. The resistance of it is now 80 ohms, which is slightly less than before. And the resistance from here to here is 26 kilo ohms, but it's probably voltage dependent. This is just horrific. But now let's make an autopsy of it to see what's the isolation in it. So now it's completely cut. And as you can see there is some white isolation material in it. Which is quite brittle, it's almost like a sand. Is it actually a sand? I don't know. And here is the connection. This is probably not yet the heater, it's just the connection and the heater starts somewhere here. And so let's cut it even more. So as you can see there is some white material in it, some powder, which easily pours out of it, like this. So it really seems like there is no solid isolation, there is just a resistive wire in a spiral inside of some powder. That's amazing. So as you can see there is absolutely no safety in it and I wonder what's the production process? Is it like they take a metal pipe, they stretch a heater in a spiral between two terminals, then they put some isolation in it which looks like sand and then they bend it into the shape. That's weird. But there is absolutely no guarantee that the spiral doesn't go to the metal pipe somewhere. The pipe is not grounded, of course. So the metal pipe can very easily become life at mains voltage. At the end of it, at the terminals, the isolation is at least a little bit solid in it. But in the middle of it, it's just sand. They probably put some material in it to solidify it at the ends, but it doesn't get all the way to the tube, it stays just here and here, but here it's just sand. The isolation really is solid just in those areas, but here the spiral can already go to the pipe, just by shaking it or just by thermal expansion maybe. I guess that the tube is filled with sand, then it's bent, and then it's filled with some material to solidify the sand, but the problem is that the material doesn't get all the way to the tube. It's probably supposed to fill the tube completely, but it goes just here. 
So as you can see, this device is just another safety disaster. This is Diagon Wild and see you in my next videos and thanks to all of my patrons on Patreon. I really appreciate your support. And I also plan to take a look at this flashlight, which looks quite interesting. It looks like a serious flashlight, not a Chinese toy with a 5mm LED.